Luca Joe here for another infamous unboxing video because unboxing videos are the beauty pageants of war games and today we'll be unboxing Dawn of Empire designed by Steven Newberg and published by Compass Games. This is a game about the naval war in the Atlantic during the Spanish-American War of 1898. It is a game that borrows many of its mechanics from War at Sea, but it has other different elements, such as leaders and uh, other elements that will become obvious even in this unboxing video. So, let's take a look at the back of the box. And the back of the box shows a portion of the map, as well as some counters, and contains typical information about the game. The game is rated 5 out of 10, as to solitaire suitability, it has some uh, hidden elements like uh, fleets or uh, ships being placed face down on the map until they encounter enemy units and also orders and you will see that squadrons are also given orders in this game unlike War at Sea. The box is a very sturdy box and it has a linen finish and uh, I find the box very appealing I like the color schemes there's a bag of four d6s two white and two black and here we have the rule book and it is glossy paper 20 pages in all but not all is rules. There is a detailed example of play that begins in page 14 and optional rules and designer notes cover pages 12 to 13. So rules of the standard game uh, cover only 11 pages and here we see the rule book. It is two columns. There's illustrations and here we have uh, uh, pictures of the units and the markers in the game. Let's take a look at the counters. The counters are five-eighths of an inch. Here we see the Spanish uh, ship counters. You have the Pelayo, a battleship. And the numbers that you see in the bottom from left to right they are attack, defense, and movement allowance. So you have ships, battleships, uh, different types of cruisers. And then you have port units. These represent the defenses of the ports. And you see there Cadiz, Canaries, Havana, Cienfuegos, and Santiago. They also have attack and defense ratings. The movement allowance is zero. And then there's a rating on the top left corner, which is the minefield rating. Then this game uses orders uh, to conduct actions uh, for, for the uh, ship units and squadrons. And orders must be selected and placed face down. That's why you see that on the back of the orders counters, you see their word ordenes in Spanish, which means orders. So uh, you select the orders for each one of your squadrons. The number of order markers is limited for each side, and you will see that the U.S. has much more order markers, orders markers, than the Spanish. The Spanish have here three commanders, and they are rated by the number of stars. So Camara has three, while Monterla has one. And then there's an optional rule, German uh, commander, uh, Thiel, and uh, he starts in Venezuela if you're using the optional rules. So you see that the counters will show you the attack, defense, movement allowance. The ship class or type is in the top left corner. And then on the top right corner, for example, Pluton gives you a C and a Z. And that's the uh, starting area. So that's Cadiz, the code for Cadiz. Well, you see that uh, Ensenada will start the game in Havana. Let's take a look at the other counter sheet. This one contains the U.S. ships. 
and you have them here the battleship indiana massachusetts you see the new york there starts in key west and then you have the commanders you got four commanders and uh the names of the squadrons you have samson commanding the north atlantic squadron watson the eastern squadron and their ports where they start in the top right corner and you see the orders and you see there's a more substantial number of orders markers for the united states i guess that uh, also is a way of uh, recreating the more flexible doctrine and you have here sea control markers this side shows American control and on the other side you have Spanish uh, control and then you have disabled markers and sunk markers and a couple of more uh, damage markers the game includes two identical player aid cards and each one of these player aid cards contains uh, an abbreviated orders section so it has a summary of how to uh, implement each one of the orders there's eight orders and then there's also uh, an illustration of the game markers and on the back side you have an abbreviated sequence of play and then on the bottom side you have the following orders requirements so for example if in one turn you uh, order your units to conduct blockade. In the next turn, they must conduct a coal order. So some orders will uh, uh, force you to take other orders immediately afterwards. And that's different from War at Sea and Victory in the Pacific. So you see it uh, adds some more elements than the uh, game on which it is based, Victory in the Pacific and War at Sea. And here we have the combat display where both players place their units in battle lines here and combat is resolved. There's spaces for disabled and destroyed units. And uh, the initiative and non-initiative player is determined. There's a procedure for that that takes into account the commander's rating, the number of ships, and as well as a random uh, element, a die roll. And finally, here we have the map, and we will now open the map and take a close look at it. Here we see a wide view of the map. It is 22 by 34 inches. It is a mounted map board, and the quality is very good. It is well mounted, and it lays flat immediately. And... Uh, it shows the Caribbean Basin and also the Atlantic Ocean. The Caribbean areas are in light blue and the Atlantic areas are in dark blue. Let's take a closer look. Here we see some of the areas uh, in the Caribbean. You have the name of the area and below you have a number in a blue box and a number in a yellow box. And that's the number of victory points that the Americans receive they control the area at the end of the turn for example in the north yucatan basin area the americans receive one victory point and the spanish receive two if they control the area and then you have the cost and movement points to enter that specific sea area one movement point and there are several several areas that cost one movement point there are other areas which are round shaped which are passages. These are more constricted areas, and they cost two movement points to enter, like you have the Windward Passage, you have the Florida Straits, and also the Yucatan Straits. Two movement points to enter. There's an additional uh, passage, which is the Puerto Rico Passage. And then you have the Atlantic areas, which I believe represent a very large expanses of sea and that's why they cost three movement points to enter and you have a north a central and south atlantic areas the ports in the game are represented by circles in the atlantic uh, areas you have the canary islands which is a spanish port 
and you also you have Cadiz and uh, many of the ports have a number beneath the name that's the number of repair uh, points the number of damage points that can be repaired in one turn at that port and if we continue towards the west here we see the United States uh, ports you have Hampton Roads Hampton Roads can repair four points of damage and you have here Mobile, Alabama you can repair two and Key West one so those are the three American ports in the game the Spanish have other ports in the New World they have three in Cuba Havana and Cienfuegos and they also have Santiago with a repair capacity of two and finally they have the port of San Juan in Puerto Rico with a repair capacity of one but in addition to Spanish and American ports, there are neutral ports in the game that can be used by each of the sides. So you see there Kingston, Jamaica, Cartagena, Colombia, and you have Curaçao, as well as uh, Venezuela, that's Caracas, and Martinique, which you, sh you see there. Some areas are worth zero victory points. Lesser and Teals is not worth any victory point for any of the sides. And some areas are worth uh, no victory points for one side and uh, one or more victory points for the other. For example, you have here the Columbia Basin, which is worth one victory point for the United States and zero for the Spanish. And conversely, you have the East Coast here of the United States, which is worth nothing for the United States, but four if the Spanish control it. So the uh, value of the areas is variable. And uh, let's take a look at the other elements you will find on the map. In the lower left corner of the map, you see an explanation of the values or ratings on the on the units for example you have the naval units you have the unit type in the top left corner and start turn and location in the right top corner we already stated attack defense and movement in the bottom you have the leaders they have their rating expressed in the number of stars and then you have the ports and uh, they have attack defense but no movement allowance obviously they're and then they have a mine rate and you have the explanation as to US neutral and Spanish ports as well as victory points and movement cost to enter on the top right corner you have the turn record track the uh, standard game is six turns but uh, you can play the uh, optional rules which will extend the game up to nine turns you have a victory point track then you have the search matrix chart and uh, this will determine if uh, units of both sides may encounter each other in a specific area and then go to combat so combat is not a automatic and it is dependent on initiative and also the particular order that was given so you see for example if the initiative player uh, issued a raid order and the non-initiative player an anchor order is going to be automatic one to six but if the non-initiative player issued a sortie order then it's only one to three with a 1d6 and there's a possibility sometimes of victory points being awarded as you see there under the blockade column and my game I notice a glitch here on the blockade column uh, you see the letters L O R E and that's over a one to five I really don't know if that's just my map or that just was a glitch that all maps came with but apart from that I didn't find anything else uh, in terms of glitches and the components uh, they look very very nice the graphic artist is Nadir El Farra and I really admire his work uh, there's really a fine line between the beauty and functionality in wargame components and uh, I think this game has very very nice components as you have been able to see here 
So this is Dawn of Empire, designed by Steve Newberg and published by Compass Games. And if you've noticed, I'm filming from a new venue. Uh, this is a studio that I habilitated in my home. It's not 100%, but uh, we're filming this video. It's the first uh, video I've filmed here. And uh, we installed uh, uh, LED lights in the ceiling. And I'll, I'll do a video later on showing you what's here in the studio. But for now, Dawn of Empires by Compass Games. And as I always say, this is Stupid Joe signing off for now. Thanks for watching.